Let me go, Mr. Hill. Chapter 1 Slap! A resounding slap landed on Catherine Jones's face. You really let me down. Your sister has had a rough time out there for more than 20 years, and here you are planning to snatch the man from her. That's very shameless of you. Covering the part of her face that was aching, Catherine looked at her mother incredulously. Mum, Ethan is my boyfriend. How can you guys be so unreasonable? Catherine had just come home after a business trip, only to see her long-lost elder sister, Rebecca Jones, sitting with her boyfriend, Ethan Lowe, on the couch. Her sister, who was returned not long ago, was holding Ethan's arm and seemed intimate with him. Seated on the other side of the couch were both Rebecca and Ethan's parents, who were having a pleasant chat with each other. In fact, Ethan was Catherine's childhood sweetheart. She could not help but come up to Rebecca to question her. However, she ended up being slapped by her mother in the face, right there and then. Mom, please stop hitting Kathy. With an anxious look, Rebecca said, It's my fault. I shouldn't have come back. Ethan quickly held her shoulders. No, Rebecca, it's my fault. I've always treated Catherine as my sister, which is probably why she misunderstood my feelings for her. Something seemed to have exploded in Catherine's head. The pain was so terrible that she could barely breathe. Sister, why would he secretly promise her a future together if he only treated her as his sister? Why would he always hug her tightly if he only treated her as his sister? Shut up! She found those words unbearable, and they were filling her with disgust. You're the one who should shut your mouth. Is this how you're supposed to speak to your sister? Mrs. Jones told her off sulkily. Can't you just be tolerant of Rebecca, considering that she has gone through 20 years of hardships? Shocked, Catherine was slightly slack-jawed. There had to be some limit on tolerance anyway. Why should she give up her love? She was not a saint either. At that point, Mr. Jones stood up and told her off glumly as well. Are you done? Ethan isn't into you either. We still need to discuss Rebecca's engagement party now. Get lost. You're such a nice saw here. Catherine trembled and glanced at Ethan, who was indifferent toward her. She then glanced at Rebecca, who was clinging to him. All of a sudden, she felt like an object of ridicule. These people were the ones she cared most about, yet every one of them was taking Rebecca's side at that moment. Tears were seen streaming down her face. After wiping away the tears, Catherine turned around and left with her suitcase without looking back. She sped through the journey once she got into the Maserati. Not knowing where to go, she stopped and called her best friend, Freya Lynch. Come and have a drink or two. Her voice sounded hoarse amid her sobs. Freya immediately agreed. Sure, I'll be there in a moment. By the time Freya rushed over to S1897 pub, Catherine had already finished one whole bottle of red wine by herself. You came at the right time. Let's have a drink together. I've ordered a lot. You're not allowed to go home until you finish the drinks. Catherine tossed Freya a bottle of beer. What's wrong? It was very rare for Freya to find Catherine behaving in such a manner. She sympathized deeply with Catherine. Where's Ethan? Is he ignoring you? At the mention of Ethan's name, Catherine felt as if a knife was scraping her heart. He's ditched me, and he's going to get engaged to Rebecca. Freya gaped. What kind of a campy plot is this? Catherine briefly told her what happened that evening. Freya felt a sense of incredulity. Ethan and Catherine were childhood sweethearts who had established a romantic relationship since high school. Throughout these years, however, Catherine studied abroad while Ethan was busy with work. It explained why they had yet to get engaged. Both their parents were under no illusions about it. They also gave their blessings to the couple. Every insider knew that the couple would get married sooner or later. Now, it turned out that Ethan 
had gotten together with Rebecca, which would then make Catherine a laughing stock. This is absurd. You and Rebecca should be equally important to your parents. Are your dad and mum out of their minds? Catherine clutched the wine bottle. They probably feel that Rebecca has suffered too much out there. Now that she's back, they just want to give her the best. Freya was in a state of disbelief. But you're their daughter too. Catherine forced out a smile. <laughs> now that Rebecca has returned, all they care about is Rebecca. Since young, they're the ones who wanted to marry me off to Ethan. Now that I'm treating the matter seriously, they're calling me immature. Also, Ethan promised to be with me forever. Yet he has changed his mind just like that. I hate him. Toward the end of her sentence, Catherine began to choke. Holding the bottle, she took a few gulps of wine and tasted her tears in her mouth as well. At that moment, she started feeling a little dizzy. Don't drink too much. You have a poor stomach. You'll feel uncomfortable if you drink too much. Freya grabbed Catherine's bottle to divert her attention from it. After that, she glanced around the pub. Never did she expect to see a familiar figure. Hey, look there. Freya gave Catherine a push and pointed to the man who was sitting at a corner. Despite the dim glow at that corner, the man was faintly visible. He wore a suit which was inappropriate for the occasion. The man had his eyes closed and was leaning against the couch, giving off an aura of brilliance. When the rotating spotlight shone on him from time to time, he looked so attractive that his face was just like the perfect side profile one often saw in comic books. After a glimpse, Catherine averted her eyes from him. No matter how attractive he is, I have no mood to enjoy him right now. I'm trying to tell you that the man is Ethan's uncle. Catherine was momentarily stunned. Are you sure? Ethan previously mentioned that he had a mysterious uncle. However, his uncle managed a company in a foreign country, so she had never seen him. A few days ago, she heard that his uncle had returned. Yeah, I'm very sure. My brother told me when we attended a party the other day. I heard he's young and he's clever with tricks. Even Zachary is at his mercy. Zachary Lowe was Ethan's father. Catherine's eyes glowed. She had an idea crossing her mind at that instant. Well, what do you think will happen if I marry his uncle? <laughs> Shocked, Freya spat out the wine from her mouth. Say that again? Catherine gazed intently at the tall, handsome figure. Since I can't become the low family's daughter-in-law, I shall be Ethan's aunt to fill the shameless couple with disgust. Chapter 2 Freya was momentarily dumbfounded. She then showed Catherine a thumbs up right away. Great! What a great idea! I'm on your side. His uncle's appearance is perfect. Even Ethan isn't as good-looking as his uncle. His uncle's wealth and power are also comparable to that of the Lowe family. I need to remind you that you have to find an excellent match or your position in Jones Corporation will be inferior to Rebecca's. So I think his uncle is suitable for you. Catherine was dazed for a second. Freya might be straightforward, but what she said was true. If Rebecca had the Lowe family backing her, Catherine's position in Jones Corporation would be at stake. Okay, I'm going to capture his heart right now. Catherine snatched Freya's purse on impulse to search for lipstick and foundation. Her pure face soon looked radiant. Freya blinked. Uh, are you sure you can deal with him? He's just a man, isn't he? Ha! Huh. Catherine swept her hair over one shoulder then held a half-full glass of red wine. With a tipsy and pretty look, she walked toward the man proudly. The closer she got to the man, the clearer his exquisitely handsome face became. His clean, somber eyebrows and exquisite nose bridge were nothing short of attractive. Hi. Sorry to bother you, but could you tell me the time now? Catherine tapped her finger on his shoulder twice. When the man opened his drunken eyes under the dim light, the word devil 
flashed through Catherine's mind. Her brain shorted out for a few seconds. After regaining her senses, she wore a pretty smile and said, I think our first encounter here is the start of our happiness. With furrowed brows, Sean Hill coldly said, I'm not a doctor. I don't provide treatment. What? You're insane, aren't you? The man's sexy lips moved slightly. Nevertheless, the words that came out of his mouth were extremely mean. <sighs> at that moment, Catherine felt like getting a mirror to take a hard look at herself. Was she not pretty? Really? Anyway, it was impossible to grasp men's thoughts. Otherwise, Ethan would not have betrayed her. I'm actually ill. I'm not insane, but lovesick. Catherine swiftly calmed down and gave an embarrassed smile. I started getting lovesick when I met you for the first time. When Sean raised his eyebrows a little, Catherine immediately seized the opportunity to say, They said one can't help feeling happy when they meet the love of their life, and this is exactly how I'm feeling at the moment. All right, I got it. You may leave now. The man averted his eyes away from her in a careless manner. From his expression, it seemed that he was unbothered by her. Catherine was deeply hurt. She was a great beauty and the pride of Sydney. At this moment, she had the urge to turn away. The moment she pictured herself becoming Ethan's aunt, however, she summoned up the courage to talk to him again. Pretty boy, could I add your contact to my WhatsApp? Lying on the couch lazily with his eyes closed, Sean looked delicately elegant. Pretty boy, could you give me your number? Pretty boy, could you tell me your name? Pretty boy, you look so charming with your eyes closed that women just find it irresistible. Annoyed by the completely shameless owner of the voice, Sean opened his eyes and asked in annoyance. I want to marry you, Catherine blurted out. The corners of Sean's mouth twitched. While smiling, Catherine added, If I'm really not planning on marrying you, what I've just said would show that I'm a scumbag. Actually, I'm quite a catch. I'm 22 this year, and I graduated from the University of New South Wales. I'm a competent woman who does well both at home and in public. Moreover, I'll pamper my husband. I'm capable of earning money too. I'm healthy and don't have any bad habits. Above all, I'm not a fickle lover. Sean was speechless. He rubbed his eyes, then gazed at her strangely. Catherine raised her hand. I can swear that from now on, I'll only treat you well and promise you everything I've said. Shut up. Sean was so fed up with her that he stood up. Only when Catherine looked up did she realize that he was really tall. He was close to six feet and two inches. And furthermore, he had such a wonderful figure. If you want to marry me, bring your birth certificate and meet me at the registry office at 10 a.m. tomorrow. The man stared down at her with one hand in his pocket. Catherine was dumbfounded. She then stammered, uh, uh, Are you joking? You can give it a go. Upon looking away, Sean turned around and swaggered to leave.